cannabis, ganja, bud, sensimilia, Mary J, nugget, pot, weed, grass, herb, chronic, marijuana. Is it the dangerous drug they say it is? What can it be used for? Why is it illegal? Let's first get a basic understanding on how the drug works. Tetrahydrocannabinol, otherwise known as THC, is an active ingredient in marijuana. It can be smoked, eaten, or vaporized. Use a preference. When it is smoked, a user rolls the marijuana into a joint or uses a pipe, bong, or bubbler. These all come in many shapes and sizes. When the user eats marijuana, it is usually cooked with a recipe. Most of the time, this requires the pot to first be made into butter. A vaporizer heats the weed up to a certain temperature so that the THC burns, but the weed doesn't. This is one of the most healthy ways of consuming marijuana because you're smoking much less. Marijuana has different effects on different people. Some common effects include dry mouth, drowsiness, increase in appetite, increase in learning power, increase in appreciation for music, movement of fatigue, and happiness. There are three uses for the plant, medical, industrial, and recreational. Medicinal, or medical marijuana, is prescribed by doctors. At this time, medical use of cannabis is only legal in a few places, including Canada, Austria, the Netherlands, Spain, Israel, Finland, and Portugal. In the States, Alaska, California, Colorado, Hawaii, Maine, Michigan, Montana, Nevada, New Mexico, Oregon, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Washington. But how can marijuana possibly be used as medicine if you make one day? Marijuana can be used to cure or treat nausea, vomiting, PMS, unintentional weight loss as an AIDS and HIV patient, lack of appetite, movement disorders, asthma, glaucoma, and painful conditions, especially neurogenic pain. Cannabis is also useful in treating inflammatory bowel disease, migraines, bipolar disorder, hypertension, leukemia, skin tumors, morning sickness, Parkinson's, epilepsy, and depression. Medical cannabis has been found to relieve certain symptoms of multiple sclerosis and spinal cord injuries by exhibiting antispasmodic and muscle relaxant properties as well as stimulating appetite. Clinical trials provide evidence that THC reduces motor and vocal tics of Tourette's syndrome and related behavior problems such as obsessive compulsive disorders. Information discovered by the Scripps Research Institute in California shows that marijuana may prevent the formation of deposits in the brain associated with Alzheimer's disease. THC was found to prevent an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase from accelerating the formation of Alzheimer's plaques in the brain more effectively than commercially marketed drugs. THC is also more effective at blocking clumps of protein that can inhibit memory and cognition in Alzheimer's patients. I have when we first met Greg, his shaking was so severe that he informed us that he would need a few puffs of marijuana in order to participate in the interview. The difference was night and day. What do you say to those that say marijuana needs to be tested and regulated and have the high taken out for pharmaceutical companies to consider it a valuable medicine? Huh. That's a pretty, and I only mean this as a measurement as to how much it is actually a pathetic thing to say. I mean, just look at me. Is it not blatantly obvious? that I have just enjoyed however many tokes. I look happy. Greg has been using marijuana for years and stated to us that he's never experienced any negative effects. I'm never. I need, I need my marijuana. That's <laughs> stupid. It takes away my discomfort.
let's call it, it does enhance my very being. Where do you think you'd be if you didn't get to smoke a legging with your pain? <laughs> I would have found a way. THC has been found to reduce tumor growth and common lung cancer by 50% and to significantly reduce the ability of cancer to spread, say researchers at Harvard University who tested the chemical in both lab and mouse studies. The researchers suggest that THC might be used in a targeted fashion to treat lung cancer. Breast cancer kills more than 41,000 American women every year. Researchers in the San Francisco lab are working to shrink that number, and they're doing it with an unusual weapon, marijuana, or at least a compound from it. And what we found is that the, um, this compound called cannabidiol was particularly effective at inhibiting aggressive breast cancers. First, scientists at California Pacific Medical Center discovered a key gene which enables breast cancer to spread. Then they tested the pot compound and realized it could actually inhibit that gene's destructive path and stop the spread of tumor cells and potentially do it without harming a patient. We know that this compound extracted from cannabis is non-toxic in patients because it has already been used for different kind of disease. The benefits may not stop there. Scientists say the cannabis compound may fight other aggressive cancers, including prostate cancer. The next step, animal studies, then clinical trials. So it may be several years before patients may benefit from a cannabis cancer fighter. I think it's a promising, um, a promising avenue in terms of the treatment for aggressive cancers, and which is really where we need treatments for. Most social drugs, such as alcohol, cocaine, and nicotine, suppress growth of new brain cells. On the other hand, cannabinoids promote the generation of new neurons in rats' hippocampuses, which is the part of the brain responsible for learning. Many doctors suggest marijuana is the safest, most useful drug on the market. The side effects are minimal, yet it can be used in so many ways. Because marijuana happens to be a natural plant that anyone can grow, drug companies cannot patent it and profit from it. The way to riches in the pharmaceutical industry is to have a drug which can be patented. Cannabis is problematic right from the start because it's a multi-molecule drug. In 1930, it wasn't possible to patent plants, and that's the reason that pharma never picked up on this, because by synthesizing and owning compounds, that's where the profit motive comes into the pharmaceutical industry. The patent in the United States lasts for 20 years. Well, you can charge whatever you want at that time, and that's where you make the killing. There's no money to be made off natural plants. If you can use a natural medicine that you can grow in your own home, which costs pennies to use, you're going to do that. You need water and dirt. Not only that, you have that plant forever. Prime motivation behind any drug company is to make money, and as much money as possible. They're corporations, and corporations, everybody knows, that it's like that diffusion of responsibility thing. There's so many people working for corporations that they lose their humanity. Drug companies know its uses and try to disguise it, such as Marinol. Marinol contains synthetic THC and is claimed to be as useful as medical marijuana. Marinol lacks several of the therapeutic compounds available in natural cannabis. Patients complain its benefits are only a portion of the natural form. Cannabis has many chemicals in it besides THC, and they are a part of its medicinal value. The side effects are more serious, and its medicinal benefits are significantly less. So why is Marinol on the market when it is far less beneficial? It has THC in it, the chemical in marijuana that makes you high. Why is marijuana in its natural form not medicinally available throughout the world? Hemp is budless marijuana that produces strong fibers that can be used in many ways. It is grown like corn, yet can produce 25% more ethanol. It is the most durable fiber known to man. In fact, it is three times as strong as cotton and it's cheap to farm due to minimal growing requirements. Hemp is also a very eco-friendly crop. It requires no pesticides and needs very little water, yet it renews the topsoil with each growth cycle. It grows in most temperature regions, but is illegal to grow in the United States, so we import 